In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a very cool Cubase tip by answering a question coming from HFD Ook. In Pro Tools, I used to work a lot with the tab to transient function. Now I switched to Cubase Pro 10 for many reasons, but I couldn't figure out how to make it work in Cubase. So today I'm gonna to show you how to use hit point navigation in Cubase 10. Hey, what's going on? Chris here from Mixdown Online. Now, if you're new here on the channel, subscribe, click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. And again, guys, share and like this video. And before I forget, if you wanna increase your knowledge of Cubase and get control over the software, check out my premium course, The Ultimate Guide to Cubase. I'm gonna leave the link on top. All right, so now let's jump in. In Pro Tools, there's a function called Tab to Transients, which allows you uh, to, uh, to navigate from one transient to another of a selected track. So in Cubase, I'm gonna show you how to do the exact same thing. Okay, so now, uh, something you need to understand is that Cubase automatically detects hit points when importing a track, when importing audio or recording audio. Um, and just to show you, if you go into edit and down to preferences and editing and audio, you see a feature called enable automatic hit point detection and it is activated by default and this allows a Cubase to detect hit points uh, of a recorded or imported audio file. So now from that point on, what we can do, we can navigate using keyboard shortcuts between hit points. So let me show you what that looks like. First, I have this track, this kick drum track selected, and I have a shortcut on my keyboard, the B and N key command that I can use to navigate from one event to another. So by using N, I can navigate to the next event and by, and by using B, I can navigate to the previous event. Now, if I wanna navigate um, by using hit points, I only have to uh, click on Alt and then N to go to the next hit point and B to get to the previous hit point. Okay, I'm just gonna zoom in a bit so it's gonna be a bit easier for you to see. And there you go, now I'm navigating um, from one hit point to the other. Okay, very simple, Alt or Option if you're on Mac, and N to locate the next hit point, and B to locate the previous hit point. Now, if you select an event, you can see the hit points. I'm just gonna move my playhead, and there you go. Now I have hit points right here. I'm just gonna zoom in a bit. And now these are the hit points that I have. I can see them visually on the selected track. If you don't see them, what you can do is go to Edit, down to Preferences, then go into event display, click on audio, and make sure the show hit points on selected events is checked in. I'm just gonna uncheck it, apply, and those two hit points um, are not there anymore. Okay, that's because the show hit points on selected events is not checked. I'm just gonna check that on and click on apply, and there you go, they're back. Um, if in your case you also have the grid, uh, the grid overlay uh, that is shown on all your events, you can go on event display and tweak the, uh, the, the overlay intensity by clicking from minimum to maximum. It's gonna click on apply at the maximum. Now we have the grid on all those events, but that can be confusing a bit when working with it points at the same time. So I like to bring that to the minimum so I don't see my, um, my grid over the event when I need to see what's happening with the hit points. So this is how you can do so. Uh, now I'm gonna double click on that event and I'm gonna bring the sample editor. I'm just gonna bring that full window. And there you go, now I have all of my hit points right here, which basically uh, detects the transient of the sound. I can modify the intensity of the, uh, the hit point detection done by Cubase by clicking on the threshold. I just need to uh, modify the uh, intensity by bringing up or down the threshold value right here on the left. Uh, to, to, to reach that option, make sure you click on the hit points tab and then you'll see threshold. And this will increase or uh, decrease the intensity of the hit point detection done by Cubase. 
So if you want to catch up the quieter transients of your sound, you just need to bring your threshold down. If you only want to catch the high transients, bring that up and it will create hit points on those high transients. That's it. Okay, so this is how you can do it. You can also navigate from hit point to hit point directly from that sample editor window by using the same shortcut or only use B and N, which will do the same in this case, only in the sample editor. Even if you keep your finger on Alt, it's going to do the same anyway, so it doesn't matter much. But you can only use B and N in this case with the sample editor on. Um, opposed to when you're directly on the um, the project window. In this case, you need to use Alt and N or B to navigate from one hit point to another. Now, using hit points can be very, very useful in a lot of cases. Um, and I'm not going to cover this in this video, but there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with hit points. You can even create MIDI notes with hit points, which is very cool for uh, drum replacement. I actually have an older video uh, talking about this specifically. I'm going to leave the link on top here and in the description down below if you want to check it out. So this is basically it. If you want to navigate and get to a specific hit point or transient, and just use that function and you will get to, uh, you will navigate easily um, through all those hit points, which is an easy way to, uh, to create events by just clicking on Alt and X if you just want to create a specific event of this uh, transient, for example, you can easily do so. So there you go. This is how you use hit point navigation in Cubase 10. If you have any questions or comments, please leave everything down below. And again, don't forget to share, to like, to subscribe to this channel and check out the ultimate guide to Cubase if you want to know more about Cubase and get control over the software. Link is in the description down below. All right, guys, I'm going to see you in the next video.